is that I was going to record the meeting. So if, if nobody has objection, I, I will do that now. Um, I, I always forget. Um, is there any other announcement? Uh, I know uh, Glenn or David would uh, uh, espouse uh, membership growth. Uh, we will need in our project and Kiwanis needs and uh, uh, helping the kids. The kids need Kiwanis and Kiwanis needs uh, more hearts, more hands, uh, more dollars, uh, more passion in uh, uh, developing the kids the way we need to and in developing and sponsoring our K kids, builders, uh, key, key clubs and Circle K clubs uh, to develop uh, the youth. And uh, so uh, membership is always a uh, top priority. Um, does anyone have, have anything uh, else to announce or uh, share? If not, I am going to uh, transition now to introducing uh, Will and uh, Diana and uh, uh, give some of their background, which I included in the invitation, but for those who uh, uh, did not uh, see the details uh, uh, and uh, as a background on uh, why they are experts uh, and uh, uh, willing to share their not only their expertise but their 89 page uh, manual uh, including uh, photos and templates and agendas and uh, uh, committee structure and other programs uh, other than the baby shower that was featured in uh, this month's Juana's magazine but developing uh, the world's greatest babies through uh, the, the family uh, uh, directing it uh, that, that this is a family education that most parents miss before having a child. Uh, Diana Ragbeer Murray is a board member of the Kiwanis of Northeast Miami-Dade and serves as the chair of the Early Childhood Committee as well as the World's Greatest Babies and World's Greatest Baby Shower Programs in Miami-Dade. She's a former manager of the Monroe Office of the Early Learning Coalition in Miami-Dade Monroe and director of public policy for the Children's Trust in Miami-Dade County where she was responsible for legislative and advocacy efforts regarding early learning, children's health, child safety, and child welfare system and juvenile justice. In addition, she was responsible for developing and implementing community engagement efforts for programs such as Read to Learn, a program to help ensure all children are reading on grade level by the third grade. Sounds like our Tennessee Read to Be Ready program that Governor Haslam initiated. Uh, Diana was a founder of the Miami-Dade Advocacy Institute for Children in partnership with the United Way of Miami and Early Learning Coalition of Miami-Dade Monroe to provide advocacy training to providers and parents. Prior to assuming responsibilities with the Children's Trust, Diana worked for the mayor's office in Miami-Dade County as a director of policy and legislative affairs and as assistant director of the Office of Intergovernment and intergovernmental affairs. And Will Blackman, uh, the first convention I attended as a Kwanian was in Anaheim, uh, California in uh, 1991. And he was the international president at that time. He's a retired rheumatologist. Early in his career, he joined the Kiwanis Club of North Miami Beach and founded the community services, found the community services to be important to him. Uh, this led to his uh, advancement in Kiwanis and eventually to the position of president of Kiwanis International 1990-91. As part of his experiences in Kiwanis, he became very interested in early childhood issues and helped develop and then introduce a program called Young Children Priority One to Kiwanis Clubs Worldwide. This program focuses on the prenatal period to age five. As part of this involvement, Dr. Blackman was involved in treating a, in creating a partnership of UNICEF and Kiwanis International to virtually eliminate iodine deficiency throughout the world. This led to major increases in the use of iodized salt and subsequent improvement in health, healthy brain development, both prenatally and after birth. He continues to be active in Kiwanis and in early childhood organizations within Florida. Well, it is my pleasure to introduce Will and Diana, 
And uh, we're not going to display the 89 page uh, manual that I will share with our book committee. Uh, uh, but I do, do want to share a two page uh, highlight uh, the program guide. Uh, I think the cover, cover sheet is the. Uh, I need to uh, let me uh, eliminate my uh, Adobe Acrobat uh, or PowerPoint uh, from the screen now. So that doesn't interfere. Well, technical challenges. Okay, let's see, how do I get rid of that? I don't know. Uh, Larry uh, Dobson, do you have suggestion as to, uh, I don't know if I'm, am I currently sharing? I can't get access to my screen. You have screen share disabled. Uh, even for myself? No, that's what it's telling me. You've dis disabled it for participants, so you need to change that. Well, I'm going to display it, but it, uh, my uh, 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 PowerPoint slides that are currently on the screen, PowerPoint slideshow, uh, okay, I'm getting rid of it now. Okay, you should have up at the top of your screen as host, there should be a box where you can check, we'll give you a drop down where you can enable screen share. Okay. Um, all right, what I want to do now is share another file for the benefit of Will and Diana. Uh, this is a photos, that's not the one that I had intended to share, stop share, and then share the right file, Vic, get with it. Okay, uh, can everyone see the world's greatest baby shower now, uh, the fire? Yes. Okay. Um, okay, Will and Diana, go ahead. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, my fellow Kiwanians from all different levels of leadership, from community leadership of the general club member, uh, right on up to a past international president, uh, the past governors, the lieutenant governors, and uh, the governor. Uh, I'm delighted to be here with you. I had occasion yesterday to talk to Vic briefly and learned a little bit about your club and am impressed uh, very much so with all that you are doing for children and delighted that we are able, Diana and me, uh, to bring to you a program that focuses on the earliest part of life, starting before you're born, right on up to age five. And that is the program that we call the baby shower, or at least that's what it started out to be. And this is not a program that my club began. I learned about a baby shower being done in Titusville, Florida, many years ago, and it had been running for several years by the time I had learned of it. And I was then invited to see what it was like and went up to Titusville, a couple hundred miles, drove on up and was quite impressed, uh, told the uh, people who were associated with it in the Kiwanis Club of Titusville, anything I can do to help? And they said, yeah, why don't you come back next year and be one of our speakers? And I did that probably for three or four years out of the next seven or eight. And each time was impressed further with what was accomplished by this <laughs> and the various organizations that they had working with them. They were sponsored in part by the local hospital, but by other organizations as well. And they had their program run in a shopping center, which had some empty space. 
And each year they got permission to use that empty space. Several years ago, unfortunately, the shopping center was destroyed. I mean, literally, it was just broken down and is used for other purposes now. And they were unable to find additional space to hold their program again. I, meanwhile, wondered if this wasn't something that other clubs could do, but frankly, never, never gave a thought to how best to make it happen. And then I was very fortunate in my club to have a member join who I had had the experience of working with when I was on the board of the Children's Trust in Miami. And as you heard, Diana Ragnar Murray was at the time, a, 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 uh, she was the lobbyist for the club, for the early learning people in the community, for individuals and parents who uh, were unable to themselves to get up to Tallahassee and lobby. She was the lobbyist and served other purposes as well as an employee of the Children's Trust. And I was fortunate. I went up to Diana one day after she had said she was retired. And I said, since you retired, how about joining my Kiwanis Club? And she said, okay. And that is the reason we now have a program in North Dade called, what's called, the baby shower. Now, babies, uh, we'll get into that a little further. But I contacted the Titusville people who I had worked with and said, you have a manual that we can work with. And they sent the full manual that they had. And at that point in time, Diana took the manual and looked at it and started to work with it. And I'm going to turn it over to Diana for much of the rest of the program, because what she has done is literally create the program that we are using and that we hope other Kiwanis clubs, including yours, and we're delighted that you come back to us, uh, and others will take as well. It's a personal opinion, biased as it is, it's an excellent program. It's not easy, it's a lot of work, but it also brings in other organizations and groups that are not necessarily used to working with early childhood in addition to the ones that do work with early childhood. And we are looking to build our membership with people from some of these groups, just as you are building your membership by working with children. So at this point in time, let me introduce Diana Murray. Well, thank you, Will. Thank you, Vic, and everyone here today. I also am impressed with everything you are doing as a club and hope we can continue to have opportunities for mutual exchange of information. So Will is right. He asked me to join the club. And shortly after that, he said, would you like to go to lunch? And handed me a very large, I will say very, very large three ring binder and said, you know what? There's a club in Titusville that's doing something called a baby shower. Would you like to do something like this in Miami? So I said again, sure, because I cannot tell Dr. Will no for some reason. And I took it home and started flipping through it. And I said, oh boy, this is um, going to take some work. So what I think we should do, I have a planning background also, is create a planning committee. We're gonna need others at the table to bring their expertise and resources and guidance to this. I think we need a consensus process. We need to pull our great resources and minds together. And so I did. You will see the logos at the bottom of the slide that Vic has that shows the great incredible partnership we have with hospitals such as Jackson North, the city of North Miami Beach, another hospital underneath Jackson is North Shore Medical Center, the Children's Trust, um, which is a unique organization and I worked for for 14 years. It is a dedicated funding source from the property tax, tax millage just for children's programs. Florida is the only state that has the ability to create these dedicated um, sources of revenue for children. So the Children's Trust as a funder, you're gonna be number one on my call list. 
and the children's movement. Dave Lawrence, who some of you may know of, um, was a former editor and publisher of the Miami Herald. And in his retirement, he decided to create something called the Children's Movement of Florida. And the Florida Department of Health, United Way, of course, the Fatherhood Task Force, because we believe that fathers are very important to have at the table. There's been a lot of emphasis on moms and babies, but dads are important too, and that had a major focus in our program. The Healthy Start Coalition of Miami-Dade, because they focus on prenatal health. Marquee Bank, always good to have a bank at the table. Women, Infants, and Children, Florida Kid Care, which is our state-operated subsidized health insurance program for children, the Family Learning Partnership of Miami-Dade that focuses on early literacy, our Early Learning Coalition, and a radio station, WMBM, which we'll talk about later. <clears throat> we met monthly, Fridays, Noon to 1.30 was a great time. People are relaxed on Fridays. They come in their jeans. We had lunch brought in and we just brainstormed what should this program look like? And before you knew it, over the course of six months, we had adapted the manual and created a whole new program that would work, we thought, for Miami-Dade. We are a little bit larger than Titusville and we have some unique challenges and opportunities. But that was always there as a guide for us. That three ring binder was our comfort, <laughs> knowing that we were not going into entirely uncharted waters. So we talked about everything in those planning meetings from venue, where should we hold this? And it was decided to hold it at the city of North Miami Beach. North Miami Beach being a very diverse community, we have a strong Haitian American population, an African American population, a Hispanic population, and a Jewish population. And everybody gets along. And the city is very, very good to work with. They were very supportive. We went to one of their board meetings and they pretty much asked us what else we needed besides the hall and the five classrooms and security and so on and so on. They were amazing to work with and a number of their commissioners actually came to the event. We talked about food, decor, speakers, celebrities, you name it, we talked about it. We talked about operations such as insurance and security again and parking and, and all of that. But the key I would say to having a successful event was the enthusiasm that the group brought to the table and their willingness to help create the workshops, which we'll, we'll talk about a little later, to help us with fundraising. You're gonna need money for this. And the sponsorship package helped tremendously because we had some funders at the table, such as Marquee Bank and the Children's Trust and, and so forth. We didn't have to spend a lot of time on individual donations, although that is very important to have buy in and feel and have the community feel like they also have a chance to participate. But one of the things we did establish very early on is we wanted to spend most of our budget on promotion. There was a similar event that was held a few years prior to this that didn't really um, get advert advertised. It was also on a day with a similar major event in the same area and not a lot of people came but we were not discouraged. And so we decided very on that promotion was going to be key to the success. We needed to get the word out to parents that this was something they just had to come to. So a big part of our budget was dedicated to radio, which is a relatively cheap way of reaching a lot of parents. And we wanted to target parents in our demographic young parents, expecting parents in their 20s and early 30s and teen parents as well. And so we decided to go with 
what's known as 99 Jams, which is an urban station. And they have a celebrity by the name of Super Cindy that all of these young people are listening to day and night. They love her. And she is just effervescent and enthusiastic. And that was a hit for us because we created radio spots. She came on and promoted us and she actually came to the event. So that was a big draw for us to feature Super Cindy coming in person. A big part of this also was what are we going to do to provide information to parents when they come to this event. We're working off the winning formula of information plus fun. That's the package. We want to give you as much information as you can possibly take home, as well as resources and contact information for some of our providers in a fun-filled environment that you just got to come to. And so you need the balloons, you need the DJ, you need the hype of having all of that energy and excitement. And the day included, thank you, Vic, a nice breakfast welcome. People were lined up before 7.30. When we were setting up from the night before and coming back to just finish some final touches, there were lines of people, we couldn't believe it. And they came in, they had their breakfast, and then we started with our elected officials from the city of North Miami Beach. We expected one and three came. So that was good. And of course, our president, Ed Margolis, did a welcome. Sponsors, we had to recognize our sponsors. We raised nearly $18,000 in two months from we started our fundraising. And it was incredible. And we decided that we were going to have one of our biggest raffle drawings right in the beginning, which was to give away some infant car seats. They are a hit. Parents want them. They drove from near and far to get them. And we also did a demonstration and installation and this is operated by our Healthy Start Coalition. So 12 car seats that were couriered there that morning started the hype of you're gonna win prizes, you're gonna take home gifts. This is the theme of a baby shower. You're not just coming to these boring workshops, you're gonna have fun, you're gonna take things home for your baby. And then we decided you're going to break out into these workshops you have a choice of three for each session. And these workshops will we'll talk about later, but <clears throat> that is where we gave the raffle tickets out. You had to go to a workshop to get a raffle ticket to come back to the main exhibit hall to win a prize. So that's the incentive of getting your information, pick a workshop, go there, get some raffle tickets and come back into the main hall with all the excitement and fun and activity to see if you're gonna win some prizes. We also gave you some goodies in your workshop. Parents could not believe they were getting designer diaper bags. They were getting public supermarket gift cards just for going to these workshops. We were incentivizing parents to learn. And then you go back into the main exhibit hall and this hall is organized with the exhibitors, all of our sponsors and other exhibitors having their tables all around the perimeter. So you can walk around and chat with them and sign up for programs and take up brochures and so on. And then in the center, we had the kids zone, which is where parents felt their kids were safe if they wanted to go to a workshop. There were staff members there entertaining them with puppet making, with storytelling, with yoga for kids, and the kids were having a blast. So that's going on in the center. The kids were the center of attention, but meanwhile you have all of these expert exhibits going on around the side. Then it's time to go back and have another talk and then you get your raffle tickets in there again to come back into the main hall to have more fun and games and celebrations and raffle drawing. By then, Super Cindy has arrived. 
and everybody wants to see her and be part of that. And you are having more raffle drawings and prizes, strollers, high chairs, diaper bags stuffed with diapers, all kinds of really good things that parents were winning and excited about, as well as some smaller things. Um, but you name it, we had them there. And then you go back into your third set of sessions and come back for the final grand prize and Super Cindy's gonna announce that. And there were games, we had little silly games where moms and dads came up and competed for things and everybody was having a really good time. We had cake, we had lunch brought in again and it was a really good time. So I want Will to talk about what those talks with experts and parents looked like, sounded like, because that's the key to our information dissemination. And we kind of stopped calling it workshops in our planning process and we just decided it's talks with experts and parents. Let's make them equivalent, it's a conversation and it's not work. So Will, do you wanna share the 10 workshops that we decided on? Will, we can't hear you. Will? Will? Mute. There. Okay. There you go. Uh, okay. We, we uh, broke them down into three different sections, as you saw. So session one, two, and three. And session one was for uh, expectant parents. So we were going from prenatal on up to age five. And we uh, made it known to people that uh, these, were the diff these were the age groups that we were interested in. We wanted people who already had their children. We wanted children, children to be. We wanted the families there also to hear. And as uh, has been pointed out, we wanted the dads there as well as the mothers. And a real special push was made to get the fathers. We even had special workshops for the fathers included. So the first one was with uh, expecting parents and we had obstetricians speaking to them. We had uh, individuals speaking to them who would discuss more insurance uh, type of things that they might be, uh, uh, might be helpful for them as well. The second session we had for new parents and this would include the early learning coalition people who were able to reinforce the importance of looking for high quality childcare if it was necessary, going into some aspects of parenting with early young children, very young children, and not, um, not, un, not recognizing discipline as meaning punishment, but as meaning something that you teach at the time a child might be doing something that should not be the optimal thing that they should be doing, but you distract them and teach them the proper way and that this is the best way of going for discipline. We also went into uh, those sessions with speakers from our health department uh, and a pediatrician was there as well. And this is where we first brought in fathers to actually speak as well for, to other fathers as to the importance of the, of the father in bringing up a child. And in fact, we also tried to get the fathers to discuss even in session one as an extra comment that, yes, mom, you're pregnant, but please make sure your father, the father, not your father, but the father is also available uh, at, and part of the process that you're going through because you're both going to be there after that baby is born. You both are necessary for the health and well-being of yourselves and of the child. And the final third session was on parenting for the older child. And this includes discussions of advocacy. What should you be looking to do to support the community, to support yourselves, to support the other organizations that focus on early childhood so that the resources are available to best bring up children 
and, and do the best job of bringing these children up. Nutrition was part of it. We had appropriate discipline again for the age, the different age groups. And all of this over these three sessions, as said, it was done in a very non, how shall I say? It was done on a friendly basis. There were no fancy words used. It was brought down to what we considered to be a level that anybody, no matter what their education might be, could easily understand. And I think that this was part of the reason that we not only had the 500 people who showed up for this particular one, but that by the time we were getting ready for our second one, we actually had seven, 600 and some people signing up because the word had gotten around that they are telling us things that we really benefited from, we really needed to know. And these then were the types of workshops that were done. They were uh, generally filled with people standing in the rear. And in fact, that was one of our big problems. We didn't have enough space. Even though the city had given us a hall and had given us separate rooms that we could hold these in, there were really not quite enough space for all people. One of the good things was that we actually had 28 different organizations with desks and things out in the general area that they could walk around and view. And these were our exhibitors. And so the people who couldn't make it into the workshops were still getting information, even though it was more from exhibitors than it was specific information on a specific topic. And uh, at that point, I'll get back to Diana to go a little further. Thank you, Will. So as Will just said, it was a huge success. We had over 550 people attend. We were planning on 400 for our first time and due to the size of the space, that would have been good, but we were pleasantly surprised to get over 550. We asked attendees for a very short um, survey to be completed just by writing on a board on your way out. Three things. What did you like most about the event? Would you come to this event again if it were held next year? And anything you would like to see changed? Overwhelmingly, the responses were this was awesome. This was amazing. We learned so much. This was very helpful information. I need to share this with my cousin. I can't wait to come next year. And as far as anything that we should change, it was really minor. It was around things like, could you have it for a longer period of time? <laughs> could you start it a little later in the day? and go a little bit longer, but really, um, and could you have a larger space? Yes, we did um, feel a little cozy um, in some of the rooms and would have loved a larger space. So we were pleased with that. We um, started planning for next time especially since the city approached us with their feedback and, and said, can you have these every year right here? We don't want you to go anywhere. This is such a benefit to our city and our residents. So that was really heartwarming to hear. And um, they had been such a good partner helping to promote the event and showing up on the day and doing social media and their bulletin boards, their electronic bulletin boards that they have throughout the city featured this event heavily. So. We were poised and ready to um, duplicate almost this event with minor tweaks here and there um, and some changes to a few of the workshops for 2020. But as we know, COVID hit. And that's when we decided we needed to regroup as a planning committee and try to figure out what do we do? Do we wait a year and just skip into 2021 and then have this event again? And the planning committee felt no. 
we have too much important information to share with parents because there will be new parents every year. Parents will be pregnant who are not pregnant yet. And those who were pregnant last year will now have had their babies and they will be going to different workshops and then they'll be picking a childcare center and so on. It's a cycle. You got to keep having these things regularly. And so that is when we decided to have a virtual program for this year based on radio, building a website and having newsletters. We were starting with twice a month newsletters. We are now having them monthly, but we are doing so many other things. And the radio show has been a huge success. In fact, we have really organized two different radio shows. So the first one is back with 99 Jams with Super Cindy, where throughout the month of June, we decided to have a series of Facebook Live events on Saturdays, back to back, what we called a mini series, eight different episodes, and we called this Baby Talk. Baby Talk with Super Cindy and promoted it heavily on the station and digitally and through social media. And a lot of people came to that. Thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands. So we're going from a reach of 550 people coming to something to now thousands and thousands and thousands of people because we now have a digital platform. And that was great. What we did was we brought the same obstetricians, pediatricians, nutritionists, and other experts who would have held those workshop talks with experts to the platform, to the Facebook platform. So there was no information lost and more people got to participate. So that was a huge hit. And we had already raised our money for the 2020 event. Our sponsors actually competed. It was a nice problem to have for the signature sponsorships. They were like, you know, I really didn't like having to just be a host sponsor last time. I want to be the signature sponsor this time. So that was a nice problem. They were fighting each other to be the best sponsors. And we're like, we will accept as much as you will give us because we have a lot to say. And that was a great problem to have. Then we went to WMBM, which is a gospel station, and they have a very strong mission to empower families with young children. Their pastor believes in youth programs and has been a community figure for a long time. And we bought some time with, with um, WMBM Gospel 1490 and had half hour segments every Wednesday with our different partners. We now wanted to feature women, infants and children and United Way and the Children's Trust and the Early Learning Coalition and so on and so on and bring them on and have them speak to the community about all the great programs they operate and run and give out their contact information. And why don't we have some prizes for people who stay for the whole time? We will ask a couple really easy questions and have you call in to win your prize. So we created a buzzer on the radio show with that. And this has taken us through the whole year. The format has been lovely. And we've also driven people to our website through that format. That WM radio show has an audience of between 20 and 30,000. So we have had a real good opportunity to reach many, many more people this way. And we send the newsletters out to all of the parents who registered both for the 2019 event and those who had signed up for 2020 before we had to cancel. We would have got more than 600 people in our now larger space, but we had to cancel before we had even finished registration. So no telling how many people would have actually come, but it was a lot. So now we have a list of parents and their email addresses and we're sending them these news newsletters and they're passing those on to their friends and our partners are also sending them out to their networks 
and people are subscribing as well. So we have a nice database of recipients for the newsletters. The problem with that approach was that I felt, and Will agreed and others did as well, that we were sharing a lot of great information, but we weren't having any fun. And the whole formula for a baby shower is you get to come and have fun, you have cake and you have see balloons and you have, you know, Super Cindy come and you act silly and you win prizes. And yes, you learn some things and you take information home. But that ingredient of having gifts for baby was missing from just a radio newsletter approach. So we said, what about a drive through baby shower? And everybody on the planning committee said, that's a great idea, we should do that. Well, we had a real shower because it occurred in October and it rained. And we were out there with our umbrellas and the cars were lined up and they were coming through and we were putting all these boxes of goodies and information and diapers. The diaper bag really came out for us <clears throat> in the trunks of all of these cars in the rain, but they kept coming. They kept coming. And the smart thing I would say that we did with that event was we partnered with the radio station and a church. The gospel um, side of the radio station is New Birth Baptist Church. And that's a huge, huge church with a parking lot that facilitated this. And parents also went on to get food and other things the Miami Dolphins was there, major hospitals were there. So it was a, a really large event and the baby shower was one component of it. So we piggybacked on that event this time and took our gifts and, and parents loved it. The fact that they were able to get blankets and diapers and pacifiers and um, toys and, and other goodies for their babies, uh, breast pumps, books, all kinds of helpful things. So that's our 2020 program. And I will turn back to Will to talk about what we think 2021 might look like. Uh, and actually I see that we are uh, uh, running into a time uh, problem because your program generally ends at two. So let me do this. Let me just simply say that we, uh, we will be willing to stay around if there are people who would like to ask questions after the meeting ends. But one point to be made is that we would be very happy to work with clubs, your club, other clubs, anywhere that we can see programs similar to this begin because we believe that it serves a significant purpose in helping parents better bring up their children and better have a household that is baby friendly rather than one in which, what do I do now? What's the problem? I've got, I can't, I can't take this anymore. We want to see those things disappear and instead let people have a happy, healthy home with happy, healthy babies. And so we'll be around for a little bit, uh, uh, both Diane and me. I see in chat, someone wants to know if they can get a copy by uh, uh, a digital copy of the manual. Are we set up to send it digitally, uh, Diana? Yes, yes, we did and I can send more. So because the answer to that is have yes. had that, but I can send it again. Yes, I have it and uh, I have the contacts for everybody that's uh, at this meeting. So I will send it out to everyone that they can glance through it. And it's very thorough and detailed and uh, uh, sharing is, uh, is requested uh, that what we were tasked with from building strong brains and Sharon Barker of Family and Children's Services, uh, New Kwanian is on this uh, uh, at this meeting, uh, and we, we have others on the uh, private sector steering committee of building strong brains. So we already have about 150 partners uh, that we can work with, but. One of the things we were tasked with was uh, providing uh, information for a trauma-informed community. 
and the uh, CDC's estimate of 61% of the children with ACEs has probably gone up this past year to uh, near 100% uh, and parents as well. But we were asked to share, uh, we were asked by the Tennessee Commission on Children and Youth, Department of Children's Services, Department of Education to develop a program such as this and share it across Tennessee because they knew Kiwanis focused on uh, the needs of children. So uh, uh, we're, we're willing to share with uh, with every Kiwanis club in the state. That's great. Uh, and you're also willing to share with the Kiwanis Club of Northeast Miami-Dade. Well, we, we, uh, we, need, we need your wise counsel and uh, advice and uh, uh, guidance throughout the process as uh, we, uh, we envision maybe uh, in implementing this project that uh, uh, we're serving uh, multiple counties. Uh, Greater Music City is not just Nashville. Uh, so we might have to have three or four events, but we do have uh, uh, members and expertise over a wide geographical area. So we, we must say on Zoom for our committee meetings and uh, club meetings and uh, developing the project. But uh, uh, having it in person, uh, I envision we can do uh, uh, mid 2021, uh, hopefully safely and uh, maybe still with masks and social distancing, but uh, uh, have an in-person event and there are plenty of venues that we could have it, but yeah, we will need to, we will need your continuing, uh, continuing counsel and advice. We are happy to stay with you through that. In fact, it was at the convention, uh, International Convention in Miami in 1999 that the multiple club membership was approved. Uh, and since I submitted that with Frank Donato's help, a uh, past international president, uh, uh, we, would, uh, we would welcome even uh, your dual uh, club membership uh, so that uh, uh, we could have you directly involved in uh, the planning and uh, the replication or duplication process to clubs across the country. Great, that's wonderful. We'll, we'll talk about that later. Uh, do I, any well, of the you. members have uh, questions? I will stop sharing the screen so we can see everybody. I can see if there are any hands up. Uh, Let me go ahead. No one else is jumping in, so I'm going to ask a question. Was there a, a, a was there any rationale when you first set up the date for your uh, giant shower? That's a good question. Yes, actually. Um, although there was a downside to it, it was hot in August, and we were worried about rain, but it was a back to school time, the end of mid to the end of August. A lot of parents are back from summer vacation and they're starting to engage again in planning for the coming year. And we said, don't forget the youngest learners. As you are getting book bags and books and things for your older children, we cannot forget about our youngest learners. So we package that in the whole back to school hype, which is a big season for us down here. That was the thinking and it worked. The reason I'm asking the question is, uh, I just wonder if, if any uh, possibility uh, would be of the Kentucky Tennessee district holding such an event in conjunction with their convention, which is usually in August. Uh, a couple of years out, we're going to have a, a convention in Berea, Kentucky. Richmond and Berea are within, which are two, two clubs that are 13 miles apart within the Madison County area. Uh, and we could conceivably host such an event in which we would have similar speakers and Kiwanians attending the convention, 
there might be a portion of that where they could actually go and attend this and it would be a kind of a living example of what can be done with it. I'm not sure how successful we would be, but it's just an idea I want to throw at you and get your reaction. I, I think you it would reaction. be an amazing idea. In fact, Dr. Will, you had the idea to pair a workshop, um, baby shower with a convention. Yeah, I, I think that this is an excellent idea and it will be accepted and it will bring people. Now, these are not, you're not looking necessarily for new members from the right. individuals who show up. This is a service project, pure and simple. Uh, you might get some new members, but they're more likely to come from the organizations that are working with you who become very impressed with what Kiwanis is now doing in, these, uh, uh, in this particular age group. And I would uh, suggest to you, Governor, uh, and past governor, I should say, uh, Klein, I would suggest that this is something that you should look at seriously and begin the planning a year in advance because it does take time to really set it up well. And yet it can be a very, very positive thing, not only for the parents, but for Kiwanis in general with the media because media will come out to that and they will point out what Kiwanis is doing and it will help the organizations that are your co-partners as well for the same reasons because they are getting their names out as well. And it also puts a focus on early childhood and early childhood is the most ignored period of life. I, I think that's a safe statement to say. We think of children starting at kindergarten. That's where we generally start thinking about it because that's when kids are in school. That's when it's easy to identify them. Okay, maybe we're starting to think of it with preschool at age four, but we don't really think prenatal on up to that level. And so you would also be making a major service event on behalf of young children. Well, with the uh, uh, large growth in Division Nine in Berea and Richmond and Mount Sterling, I would think that uh, they are most likely to uh, be a number of the new members that would attend convention. And that would be uh, many, many Kiwanians are hooked when they have a Kiwanis moment. And I think that might be a good example of a Kiwanis moment for a lot of people who don't really know what Kiwanis can do, uh, what the impact it has on the kids and their families. So uh, I would encourage it. And if I can help, uh, oh, maybe with grant funding, uh, I don't know any of the businesses or partners in uh, uh, your uh, area, but uh, I think the Kiwanis Children's Fund uh, uh, would uh, consider that. Uh, uh, and there are a number of foundations which focus on uh, the first five years, uh, as well as uh, local nonprofits that you might collaborate and partner with. The more collaborations you have, the easier it is to uh, uh, get the attention of fund grant funders. Thank you. Just as a reminder, this is Dave Coulter. Uh, for Glenn and the rest of you, um, we're looking at that convention be seven months out. Uh, because it's going to be in August of uh, 21 in Berea. And so uh, uh, I don't know, uh, Lisa is our co-chair of uh, Young Children Priority One. And, uh, uh, and I would suggest that we, we look at that uh, as a possibility at our convention. And with uh, Berea and Richmond and Mount Sterling, those clubs uh, uh, being helpful in that, uh, I think it might be good. Uh, but uh, we, uh, uh, I may let Lisa work on that and uh, along with Nat and, uh, uh, and we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. I, I do think it holds great promise, and I think any anytime you can bring to a convention something like this where people can see in action what Kiwanis is about, <laughs> it holds great appeal and makes creates a greater connection and greater uh, commitment of the members for sure. Um, 
I don't know, Glenn, if, if you're the contact in that area that maybe we could talk to. Um, I uh, happen to be a public library director in Bowling Green and know Ruthie Maslin, who is the director of the Madison County Library very well. Um, so uh, I may talk with her to see what uh, what is, if there is anything like this in that area um, and see, see what it would take to put pull something like this together. I do think they would be, I mean, it, it's obvious that you're working with a lot of partners. So I do think um, they would be a, a great partner on something like this. Lisa, in answer to you, uh, Madison County Public Library, which serves both a branch in Berea and a branch mm -hmm. in Richmond, has our, our, one of our latest members to both of those clubs and they have a representative attending Excellent. in our board meetings. Uh, so Excellent. yeah, we've got a good connection there. Perfect. Okay. We'll see if we can pull the together then for sure. Man the manual will help. The yes. manual <laughs> will shorten your time interval, but there's still a lot of work. <laughs> uh, let me not pretend otherwise, mm -hmm. but Right. What, it, what came to us and the modifications that Diana has made, uh, seven months, still a lot of work, but it is doable. I, Diana, would you agree with that? I certainly would. We um, planned our 2019 event in six months. So I, I do think it's doable. The strength of your partners, you know, will show when they own sections of this work we had subcommittees, you know, mm -hmm. somebody in charge of sponsorships and donations, somebody in charge of decor and, you know, venue planning, somebody in charge of the kids events, somebody in charge of the workshops, somebody in charge of the exhibits and the exhibit hall. And that layout is if um, you have an eager planning committee willing to volunteer to own certain sections of it, and one person is not having to deal with all of the nuts and bolts. We had an operations committee. Somebody has to contact the police and somebody has to make sure parking is adequate and the insurance is there and all of that sort of thing. So I do think that um, it's totally doable and the manual will give you a nice template to work off of. And we are here for emails, texts, and phone calls as you need. You you did not uh, go on to talk about your plans for 2021. I'm I'm guessing you may have dual plans, plans yes. where we're virtual and plans where you're live or some combination thereof. Which I guess if we did this on seven months ahead, that's probably what we would have to do as well. You are exactly right. We are bringing the best of both years together because we saw the strengths and successes in, in each. An in-person event is exciting. There is a buzz in the room and an energy that you can't replicate otherwise. There's just not get, no getting around that. That plus the reach of virtual where many, many, many more thousands of people can participate without actually being there and that you can continue the um, activities beyond the single event through radio, through Facebook Live, through newsletters um, is how I think you tag on to the signature event, which is your kickoff. That's what we did. We, had, we didn't know it at the time. The kickoff <laughs> event, which was the in-person shower and then used our list of all of the parents who registered to communicate with them later on and invite them to the radio shows and invite them to subscribe to the newsletters and so on and so on. And it just built from there. It is the best of both worlds. I, I do commend you for thinking of one plus one. Uh, we also uh, would uh, be willing to send virtually copies of our newsletters to anyone who is interested. And I believe that you have audio uh, of some of the programs yep. as well that mm -hmm. could be sent to you to just hear what they were like uh, when, when done with the uh, uh, Super Cindy. Uh, so we're, we're happy to share 
we believe in this program. We believe in early childhood and we want to see the best and most done for that age level. And this is one type of program that we feel can make a difference with parents. You know, one, one complaint parents have is that, well, now we're a parent, but nobody has a book on what to do to become a parent. Well, that's not quite true, but it's true enough for a lot of people and they don't really know what they've gotten themselves into until that baby is born. And then what do I do now? And we're trying to help them understand beforehand and afterwards. And from what they're telling us, it's making a difference. You're so right, Dr. Will. The lifelines that parents took away from the event of having cards for all of those providers that they could contact for questions on breastfeeding, for questions on any health concerns with pediatricians. They walked around the room, they had their conference bags and they stuffed it with all of the information. They signed up for additional information and services. And now these agencies are contacting and communicating with them and these new parents don't feel alone. I know when I had my first child, the home visitation I received, because this was in Canada and I was all alone, my husband and I were students, was like worth gold to me, that I had a phone number, I had a card to contact this lady who came to my house to offer to help me with anything that I might need. She ended up washing dishes in my sink. I mean, it was just anything and everything. And she said to me when she left, everything looks good, but here's my number if you ever need me. I never called her, but it was there. And that's what we're doing is we're connecting these families who are nervous, particularly in this day and age where many of them have lost jobs. Um, you're dealing with ACEs. I commend you for that. We didn't think to do ACEs two years ago. Now there's a big need for that. And how do you make parents feel secure and that they're not all alone? Will and I say that to them all the time. You are not alone. Well, I think we might, uh, we're, we're going to incorporate uh, here as we get into the planning and preparation, but uh, uh, also for the, uh, the session at Berea, I think uh, while Judy Cameron is not uh, on currently, she's with the Brain Health Institute at the University of Pittsburgh, part of her uh, duties and priorities. And through the Children's Kindness Network and Ted Dreyer and our our Muzi books uh, that we have a relationship with the Brain Health Institute at the University of Texas at Dallas, and they have an abundant resources, uh, but they need the kids and families. Uh, they're, they're doing uh, research and, and development, uh, new programs, new resource materials uh, that I think they would be interested in uh, this type of a program and uh, helping nationwide expand it and might support uh, your effort in Miami uh, uh, currently as a uh, proponent and a vehicle through which other clubs can learn uh, uh, that. Uh, and also I want to mention to uh, everybody that's on uh, a lot of the, I think the radio program, some uh, audios uh, are on your website at wgbabyshower.org. Yes. That there are a lot of resources and the newsletters are all on the website. Yes. Yes. Thank you for that plug for us wgbabyshower.org. You will see it all there. We've also been asked to uh, uh, work with the parents on such things as charging stations if they need reinforcement and ongoing workshops. And it sounds like you've planned that. So it's not just the shower. Uh, the world's greatest babies is the, the program, but the shower is the vehicle to uh, uh, meet and get the um, contact lists uh, for the parents and families uh, that you can follow up with them. And that's one of the components that we've been lacking also, that the shower is, is the introduction to launch the full-scale program. So well exactly. said. So well said. We at one point talked about calling it something else. You know, people thought mm -hmm. showers were just for moms and dads would be excluded and wanted to call it a baby fair and other things. Every time we strayed away from using baby shower, people drifted away. 
the baby shower has this really nice, warm and fuzzy feeling of happiness and excitement. You're going to come to a shower and you're going to get gifts and goodies and have a great time. Oh, and by the way, we're slipping some information in and you're going to meet some people that you might want to call next week to get a service. But um, it's turned out to be the winning hook for us for this program. One more quick question. Did you have any, I mean, did the, did the libraries locally do anything in connection with this? Yes. Running? Yes, the, um, the North Miami Beach Library was there and had a table in the exhibit hall and um, signed up parents, you know, with book cards and so forth. They were there, yes. The reason I was thinking our library is very good about making up reading lists in different subject matter areas and they could do readings in conjunction with preparing for babies or uh, yeah. children at various levels and so on. Think, Lisa, it, yeah, I think any library would be excited to do that. Uh, we also, I mean, we do children's yoga. We do, you know, you talked about a kid zone in, in the middle of your area. You know, my children's librarians, you know, we have all the STEM activities for all ages. <laughs> from zero on up, you know. Uh, so I think a library is a, a, a great partner and, you know, don't don't limit yourself to thinking about just the the reading list, although that's that's our natural bailiwick for sure, but. Yes, yes. So. Our family learning partnership, which focuses on early literacy and our librarians, mm -hmm. um, made sure that the central activity for those kids at those little tables in the center was to hear a story and then make a puppet mm -hmm. for any of the characters they heard. So they had their little pipe cleaners and they had all these different resources and they made the little pigs. It was the, the new little pig story, right? And they were walking around with little pig masks and they had little piggies they took everywhere. And dads came and sat down on those little chairs and helped them make them. So it was really hands-on and fun and interactive. And then we got them up and had them do their um, baby yoga, children's yoga. And at the time, Baby Shark had just come out <laughs> and it played all day long, pretty much. The DJ kept playing it and, and everybody was doing jumping jacks, you know? So it was a real high energy moment. Um, we had a professional photographer, we love our pictures. And so these are the things, and I must say that our Volunteers were so amazing. Those are the key club members. Our 14 students who come out for us time and time again from the key club, they just got into it. They helped us to um, put up signs on all the workshop doors. They helped to be goodwill ambassadors and bring parents in and guide them around if they were lost or needed to find the bathroom. They, trouble, they helped us with troubleshooting. They helped set up food. They were there for us um, for any and everything. So the Key Club was a great resource for us too. And I do use a Key Club member to help me with the newsletters. And she loves it. I would imagine if we had more K kids in the elementary schools and builders clubs that they would all be able to mentor the younger children and the, uh, particularly the elementary schools would be a good uh, partnership to use uh, because of uh, most or many of the kids having younger siblings uh, that need to be, uh, uh, they need the books at home from birth. Uh, they need uh, a lot of the resources uh, before the age of five so that they're better ready for school and that school is more successful as a result. So uh, right. uh, I, I hadn't thought about that as being uh, probably the most important partnership uh, as well as pediatricians. Uh, obviously, with the expectant parents, the OBGYNs are, uh, have a, uh, can do a lot of promotion through uh, their offices uh, uh, with the expectant uh, mothers, but uh, even after birth, uh, they still need to be uh, connecting. And uh, uh, the uh, Dolly Parton books from birth, uh, or the uh, what is it, uh, Dolly Parton Imagination Library and the uh, Governor's Books from Birth Foundation uh, uh, certainly need to be involved. 
That's great. We also had the fire department there. The fire department was there to talk about how to protect your home, how to protect your home from the child, uh, how to be safe, uh, setting up a safe home, which some people just don't even think about uh, protecting the plugs on the uh, lower plugs from children sticking their fingers around there and uh, uh, um, from having pots on the hot stove with the handles sticking out. People don't think about things like that. And these fire department people were going into things like that. The police were there offering to do fingerprinting. And I think they, I, I don't remember uh, up in Titusville, I don't think that they were into uh, DNA testing, but that's another possibility too, that the police sometimes can get into the DNA testing so that the parent has the DNA test at home. Uh, for their for their children, and uh, groups that you might normally not think about, but they serve a major purpose. Well, and the police and auto dealers uh, probably could help with the car seat safety inspections uh, uh, and uh, installing. Or well, in Glendale, we had a uh, we bought uh, wholesale uh, seats from Graco and had the police and the highway patrol. Uh, uh, doing the installations and teaching the parents while they were doing it uh, because 95% of the car seats were installed incorrectly. So the parents need guidance on uh, on everything. And the uh, Calneva uh, Foundation's uh, signature project for 30 years has been trauma prevention. Uh, so if we could prevent it, they're better off than having to mitigate and provide resilience afterwards. So true. And how. Well, thank you very much, uh, Will and Diana, and uh, we Our will pleasure. be in contact on a regular basis, and I will share the information with uh, clubs uh, around the district uh, through the KT notes uh, bi-monthly and more often for the clubs that are working on it, and particularly if uh, it is going to be a, uh, a, a team project at the uh, uh, district convention in August in Berea uh, that uh, we look forward to collaborating and uh, supporting that event uh, and sharing whatever whatever more we learn as we uh, start on the project. Thank you for having us and good luck with your event. Thank you very much for you. and thank you all for uh, the overtime meeting. Yes, yeah, thank you. Best to you all, stay healthy. Amen. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.